so yeah essentially we now have a, a lot of people coming to our border from belarus and and well there are a lot of contradicting opinions uh, from various sources but uh, as far as uh, my point of view is basically these people people are just illegal immigrants let's say uh, like uh, uh, so some people might call them the refugees but uh, as far as i can see them i can see only illegal immigrants since uh, when i'm watching them on the tv on news sites um, all i can see is young people who are basically younger than us we're what uh, 30 years old now yeah Uh, and like these people like look like 25 27 maybe 28 but uh, they're all young people they rock in like these uh, new adidas nike and uh, and all these uh, expensive brand t-shirts uh, they have uh, newest iPhones and they're coming through the border and they're even refusing to drink uh, water from a tap uh, basically I myself I drink water from a tap every day and I consider the, the tasting better than uh, the bottled water let's say brand Neptunas or some shit. At This le- water tastes horrible from from the shop and uh, I prefer a tap water and these people ref- refuse to drink it. So what's going on? I don't think it's like a hygienic issue like in Turkey you cannot drink tap water yes because it's full of chlorine but uh, in Lithuania well these people didn't even I think they didn't even try to drink uh, the tap water they straight up refused so what the hell's going on with this I read somewhere that uh, Lithuanians uh, tap water is one of the best in Europe I think I don't want well, to yes, exaggerate. I, I believe so too. Because I, when I resided in Finland, uh, in Finland like uh, the tap water tasted like plastic. No kidding actually. It, it was tasting like plastic but it it was still drinkable. You could drink it and then you could relieve your thirst actually with it and uh, there was no health issues or, or some shit. It, it was not like poisonous or something. But they uh, they look like uh, where I saw uh, those pictures. Uh, they look like economic uh, refugees, not uh, refu- uh, refugees running from war. And uh, you mean economic migrants? Yes. Yeah, yeah, th- yeah, yeah. I mean that. Uh, and uh, they don't look like Belarusians. They more look like from Muslim countries. Black like uh, Belarusian from Iraqi. Well, I've never met one in my life. <laughs> Actually, to tell you the truth, uh, each day I uh, when I come from work, at the first intersection, uh, usually I have to wait for quite a long time. Uh, well, you know, light turns red, turns green, but the row is like, I don't know, like I have to wait like five or six or seven lights to basically come through. And, and there is a house on the corner. And there's one black little dude living in there. And I'm pretty sure he speaks better Lithuanian than most of Vilnius's youth. You know these <laughs> Polish, Russians and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> and he's fucking black. Yeah, yeah. Shit, I would consider this dude like fucking Lithuanian. But when some people come from Belarus and they all say like there's a thousand people coming through the border and they all say I studied languages at Belarusian in, in, in Minsk University or some shit. What the fuck's this? No, you and didn't. Think, what, what no, you didn't. <laughs> I didn't study, uh, well, at school at least. I didn't study English uh, and I speak better uh, English and Russian uh, than those migrants that studied languages. What the fuck? You're right, dude. Well, from the media I've heard that uh, there are some leaders of these people, uh, these economic migrants in these camps and uh, from what the media has been telling us, uh, they speak pretty good Russian actually. And uh, 
how come these people are not different from little green men from Crimea or some shit? I don't fucking understand this. There's, there's something wrong with this situation. Exactly. And uh, one thing I learned from the last migrant crisis in Lithuania, then was, what, 1,700 people? Supposed to stay in Lithuania, but what stayed ten percent? I think, and then then the the same will happen here. Because Lithuania is a fucking dirt poor country. Exactly, this is a poor country, and I believe even less than ten percent. No one will want to stay here. But uh, let's say from a local's perspective, how does it look like? Uh... From our perspective, looking at these uh, illegal immigrants, like Lithuanian, uh, let's say. I read that they are building uh, camps for these refugees from. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're building camps, government actually. money from government money. What the fuck? In fact, I, I read actually like uh, they want to distribute these migrants. Yeah, yeah, the whole country. And, well, I, I call this actually bullshit. Like, everyone's trying to get them off of their heads, but uh, for a fact, we don't know nothing. There was uh, one article that people were complaining because they knew from a people who they knew in the government, and they were told that uh, these migrants uh, were going to, well, uh, be relocated into their, well, barrack or how should i call it a government a governmental building this government owns two floors uh, of this uh, building full of flats i, I read so, uh, i read in lithuanian newspaper that uh, they're looking into some uh, old school some old uh, uh, penthouses that are uh, that nobody uses and uh, give them to they're, refugees they're, even in our town they're resided in what all of these schools yeah yeah currently because there's no places in the migrant center at the border guard posts nothing actually next week uh, i believe uh Seimas has uh, a session regarding all this and they should, uh, well, uh, make some kind of decisions for the migrant rights and uh, how should they be processed uh, throughout this whole process. Since, like, right now, it takes, like, um, 28 days, if not 28 working days, uh, to basically answer for an application of a refugee. Yeah, I, I don't actually know this, for sure. We saw how and that they want works. They this period to 58 or something days, but they want to take away their rights. But, you know, oh, all these uh, freaking uh, human rights advocates pop up everywhere. It might infringe basic human rights. Shit, I believe... We're not fucking, I don't know, we don't owe anything to these people. If they came here, they came here. Look at the freaking Denmark. Denmark takes away all of their belongings when they're, they basically take them at their border. Everything. iPhones, gold, rings, everything. And it's considered as a freaking compensation for their living conditions. And what do we do? We take all of them, we provide them food. Bottle freaking water, and what 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 do we get from them? They don't want to work. They all say, "I want to go to fucking France or Germany." God damn it! So why the heck are you here? We saw how that worked last time because uh, Germany, France, uh, and Spain was were the four first countries that closed their borders for migrants, and Balkanians uh, pay that price. Well, actually, it was Hungary, I would say, but yeah. What do you mean, Hungary, Hungary? did a good freaking job protecting the fucking border. Ah, yes, yes, yes. And we should do the same. Basically, 
as far as I know, they're considering law reforms for this, so that uh, all the migrants that cross the border, they're not considered inside the country. When they're when they're basically their application for refuge is pending, they're not considered inside the country. So basically, I, I don't know. They can put them in jail or, or something. I, I don't freaking know how this will turn out. 